So let's go ahead and talk about a definition of a cold call. It is the solicitation, right, of business from potential customers who were not anticipating such an interaction. So the cold calling is a technique where a salesperson, a liaison, a home health marketer contacts a, an individual, okay, whether it's the gatekeeper, the doctor, the, you know, the discharge planner, who have not previously expressed an interest in your services. They don't know who you guys are yet. That's why it's called cold, right? Usually it refers to phone calls, but can also be associated to a drop in visit, such as a door-to-door. -door. But pretty much on this context, we're talking about phone calls, right? Now, early on, I said solicitation. Yes, you're soliciting, right? But don't look at it as a bad thing. Who cares? It's not a bad thing, right? There's nothing wrong about solicitation. The thing that you have to ask yourself is this. Is it the fact that do you have a great service? Do you have a great product? Or do you have great nurses? Do you have great caregivers? Do you have great therapists? If this is the truth, then who cares? You are having to push your product. You have to push your services out there. That is very important. So let you know, let's answer these few questions. Let's, let's just go ahead and do a quick roundup about your company. Number one, how many cold calls have you personally made this week? How many cold calls have you made in the past two weeks? How many cold prospects have you made within the past month? Lastly, what are the biggest problems you faced when making those phone calls? I told you guys earlier on today, I expect my guys to be able to make 50 calls in one day. Cold calls in one day. 50. 50 cold calls in one day. So within a week period, that's 250 first-time calls. How many doctors are in your area? How many potential nursing homes can you get? How many potential you know, assisted living communities you can actually speak to? A lot, Okay. And you may not have got a hold of them one time, so you should be calling them again, following them up, right? A cold call is a cold call until you can get the appointment, until you can get the person who you want to speak to in the other line. If you called them and they weren't there and you weren't able to finagle your way through, you weren't able to use the different techniques to get past the gatekeeper and speak to that particular person, it's still a cold call. You need to keep on following that up. So how many cold calls have you made this week? Typically, when I start working with clients, they will literally tell me either zero to possibly ten. So let me ask you that. Think about it. Just be honest. Write it down on a piece of paper and what we're, our job and our goal is to be able to change that ultimately. Okay, so how many cold calls have you made this week? Like I said, zero to typically ten. Right? The average is 1.33. How many cold calls have you made in the past week? 3 to 0.27 is the average. How many cold prospects have you made in the past month? 5.7, right? This is the typical, the typical that we see in this market. So you need to be able to ask yourself that. And this is you as yourself. I mean, we, when we talk to companies about their marketers and teaching them, we even expect the administrators to be doing this as well. You know, the administrators should be making phone calls as well. Everyone who's available, who's not doing anything at work, should be making prospect calls. Okay. So I told you, I told you guys about my minimum, about 50 a day. But eventually, as long as they're able to do a minimum of 200, I'm a happy person. Then in addition to that, there's about the 100 to 150 call follow-ups that needs to be made. These are from, you know, people that we already had an initial contact to. You know, these are those warm calls where we already had an interaction. We already sent them some follow-ups. We already sent them some information. The more calls you start making, the less scared you will be. Okay? You want to be able to do it more frequently. Then it becomes normal for you. Every time that I pick up the phone call, I'm scared. I am. It's a scary thing. It's a scary thing to be able to hear a no from someone. But I have to do it to become and to go past my fears. I teach people this where the fact is fear does not exist. Okay? 
And most of the time when you fear something, you need to go towards it and not away from fear. Okay, so here's a quick challenge. Stop this presentation right really fast and call 10 prospects. Okay, whether they're a doctor's office, a nursing home, or assisted living facility, or you can call any one other, you know, and other business establishments. Okay, your only job right now is to keep the first person on that phone for three minutes. And then ask for a recommendation for a movie to watch. Okay, now, why am I asking you to do this? Is because are you up for the challenge? Are you up for eventually to be able to make phone calls anytime you want to? And that's what you need to be able to do is who cares? You know, just pick up that phone call and start talking to people, right? And most of the time, you'll be surprised. We'll have, I'm going to have a meeting when I have seminars. You know, I'll challenge three people to pick up their phone and literally call a number. I already picked a number for them to call. And I'll challenge them to be able to get that person to keep them in the phone do whatever they need to do to get that person to give them a movie recommendation and eventually people start laughing at it and they say oh that was fun that was pretty crazy I've never I never prank call someone you know that's not really a prank call but the purpose of it is to be able to look at a phone call as it's not a scary thing to speak to somebody that you never spoke to have you ever wanted to speak to somebody you know, like a potential maybe doctor that you want to call. And then all of a sudden, you're about to pick up the phone and you hang it up and you say, you know what, I'll call later on. Or, you know what, they're probably not ready to talk right now, so I'll give them a call later. Let me go do something else. You know, has this ever happened to you? And if it never has happened to you, that means you don't pick up that phone a lot. Okay? But typically, you know, there's even I do this myself, where I, I make my own excuse why I shouldn't be in the phone. All right. So here's my quick definition of cold calls that, you know, that I didn't get from the dictionary. You know, it's only the most, you know, only the most successful home health marketers make cold calls. The rest just makes excuses that they do not work. Cold calls gets you more opportunities than cold walk-ins. Would you rather walk in to an appointment or walk in for a follow-up on a call? So what I'm talking about there is that, you know, imagine if you're actually walking into a doctor's office for an appointment or a follow-up from a call that you made. It's a lot easier. It makes you a lot more, um, you know, a, a lot more eased to be able to speak to somebody that you already had contact prior rather than you trying to contact them first or, you know, just walking in trying to get that appointment. You know, you can walk in like, remember the information I shared with you a few weeks back? Or, doctor, did you read the follow-up information that I forwarded you about my company? I just wanted to follow up on something. You have a reason to be in that appointment. You have a reason to be in that doctor's office. Whether they actually set up an appointment for you to come in, or at least you just made a reason because you're following up some information that you sent them after you spoke to them last. Okay. <laughs>